confidence. Mr. Dettelbach, are, are you troubled by the rule? I mean, you told him one thing 10 years ago, and now you're directly contradicting that. Ah, the date was May 8th. A fine afternoon indeed, when Congressman Thomas Massey and Jim Jordan, both esteemed members of the House Judiciary Committee, decided to start another fiery session of barbecue. They grilled one of the smartest directors any federal agency has ever had, the distinguished ATF Director Stephen Dettelbach. Oh, and mind you, they weren't content with mere verbal sparring. They decided to send a letter post-haste, demanding an explanation from the hapless ATF director on certain perplexing matters. Time is of the essence, folks, as the ATF's stupid pistol brace rule is set to unleash its force on June 1st. Alas, the silence from the judges on this matter is deafening. It appears they are biding their time, cunningly awaiting the unfolding drama in Congress before making their grand appearance. Such a complex tapestry of interconnected machinations surrounding what is basically just another ATF flip-flop. Truly, there are countless moving parts dancing to the whims of fate. So, what's this letter for? Why send it this late? Well, before we talk about the letter, we need a bit of a background. Did you get to listen to that Judiciary Committee hearing on the oversight of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives on April 24th, where Dettelback was given a smackdown? It all starts at exactly the 1 hour 53 minute mark on this video. Kentucky Representative Thomas Massey asks Dettelback if he's familiar with a letter sent by a certain John Spencer to the inventor of the stabilizing brace, Alex Bosco. The letter stated that, based on their evaluation, the submitted firearm brace, which, when attached to a firearm, does not convert the weapon to be fired from the shoulder, nor does it alter the classification of a pistol or other firearm. Dettelback confirms. Representative Massey then asks if Congress passed any laws about pistol braces between the issuance of that letter to Mr. Bosco and the subsequent production and distribution of approximately 10 to 40 million of these braces, along with the implementation of ATF's pistol brace rule. Dettelback responds that Congress did not pass a law, but, but asserts that there were changes, the submitted item was not produced, nor the same as the one marketed. He further asserts that Mr. Bosco, in fact, mentioned before in that committee that people were using stabilizing braces in ways he hadn't anticipated. Representative Massey challenges Dettelback's assertion, i.e. that the ATF claims that the pistol braces changed, which necessitated the implementation of their new pistol brace rule. He then shows Dettelback the original pistol brace to which John Spencer's letter was responding, then asks if that particular brace is exempt from the ATF's stupid rule. Dettelback attempts to dodge that question, saying that whether or not people possess products that do not fall under this classification of pistol braces and are not subject to the rule, he'll need to check their pistol braces. As for that sample of the original pistol brace that Representative Massey holds, he says he cannot definitively classify it without further examination. Representative Massey reiterates his question, asking Dettelback if he still maintains that the same agreement the ATF made in 2012 stating that this brace should not be subject to the new rule is valid, if that exact pistol brace is submitted. Dettelback again dodges the question, saying that if the brace in question is submitted with a firearm, they will examine and classify it accordingly, and if it does not meet the criteria to be classified as a short-barreled rifle, it will not fall under the rule. Yeah, he was lying. Representative Massey asserts that it is quite evident that Dettelback is misleading people. He claims that the brace has changed as a basis for their idiotic pistol brace rule, yet he doesn't exempt the original, unchanged pistol brace to which the ATF issued their original letter. He then asks how much time people have to comply with the ATF's retarded rule. Again, Dettelback attempts to dodge the question by saying that individuals can always comply, but if they wish to avoid being felons, the initial period ends at the end of May. Representative Massey then confirms that on the day of that hearing, pistol brace owners have 36 days left of the 120-day grace period. He then asks Dettelback how many people have complied by registering their pistol brace. Dettelback again doesn't answer directly. He says he's not entirely sure of the exact number, but he can look into it and provide Representative Massey with the info. He confirms that there are people making applications, and then there are also detachments. He explains that whether people comply or not, it is not the ATF's concern. The ATF's rule is designed to facilitate compliance, and if a pistol brace owner simply detaches the weapon from the pistol brace and keeps them separate, the owner does not need to register anything. They can retain the brace and the firearm independently. Again, he's lying. 
but Representative Massey acknowledges his clarification anyway and asks if he will not engage in any sort of constructive prosecution where they can accuse individuals of intending to connect the brace as long as individuals keep the brace and the firearm separate. Dettelback confirms, saying, quote, Exactly. If they maintain them separately, without connection, we will not pursue regulatory action. However, please note that this provision may not be explicitly clear in the rules. It was that last response from Battleback which prompted Representative Massey and Jordan to send this letter. And it's truly a sad day for the higher-ups over at the ATF. So, let's take a quick look at this letter. It reads, quote, the Honorable Stephen Dettelbach, Director, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, 99 New York Avenue, Northeast Washington, D.C., 20226. Dear Director Dettelbach, We are writing to ask you to clarify your recent testimony before the House Judiciary Committee. We are concerned that your agency's new stabilizing race rule and enforcement thereof will result in millions of Americans becoming classified as felons overnight without them having any intent or having taken any action to break the law. The Founders designed our constitutional structure to have three distinct branches. The branch tasked with making laws should not be the same branch tasked with enforcing those laws. Congress must be responsible for making laws, and we do not believe the ATF has the authority to enact the stabilizing race rule. Irrespective of the role your agency is undertaking in the creation and enforcement of its own rule, which is without proper congressional authority, the executive branch has a duty to be transparent with Americans about their classifications of unlawful conduct. There are less than 30 days left until criminal provisions of this rule go into effect. Therefore, it is important for you to provide the public with a clear interpretation of the parameters of the rule. When your agency takes actions that will make millions of Americans felons, you have a responsibility to give a clear, concise, and simple to understand explanation of the rule at hand and how your agency will enforce it. During testimony, you explained detachment that's not for us to regulate. We wrote the rule to make it easy to comply with. If somebody just at their home detaches the weapon on the brace and keeps them apart, they do not have to register anything. They can keep the brace, they can keep the business end of the gun. Your testimony raises concerns as it conflicts with guidelines, slides, and other documents and information distributed by the ATF. For example, ATF.gov Final Rule 2021R08F, factoring the criteria for firearms with attached stabilizing braces, slide 26 indicates that an option available to all possessors allows them to permanently remove and dispose of or alter the stabilizing brace such that it cannot be reattached. From that guidance, it does not appear that individuals can keep both the brace and the business end of the gun as you claimed in your sworn testimony. We therefore ask for your clarification regarding pistol brace detachment and would, for the sake of the law-abiding citizens, ask that you publicly correct any statements you made during your congressional testimony which may lead to a misunderstanding or incorrect interpretation of the rule. Sincerely, and signed by Thomas Massey, Chairman of Subcommittee on the Administrative State, Regulatory Reform, and Antitrust, and Jim Jordan, Chairman. I'm not sure if you caught them, but Dettelback lied several times, and to think he was sworn in. That's several counts of perjury. But hey, let's not kid ourselves, folks. People in Congress, they have a knack for bending the truth, especially when they're under oath. But yeah, they're keeping the heat on the ATF. Now, let's talk about incrimination, shall we? If you, by any chance, decide to spill the beans and confess to owning an unregistered NFA item without going through the whole begging for approval rigmarole and shelling out 200 big ones to make it all legit, well, let's just say you're treading on thin ice. Personally, I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. If you're considering it, make sure you fully grasp the consequences. Read that rule, my friend, cover to cover. Don't just rely on what you hear or what people tell you. Be your own judge. Now, I'm no legal expert, but you shouldn't rush out and expose yourself to potential charges when the whole thing is likely to get slapped down anyway. So take my words as you will, and sure, I get some folks firing back, claiming I'm dishing out bad advice. Well, you know what? You do you, my friend. If you think you're getting a free pass on that tax stamp, knock yourself out. And that's all the time we have for today. If any of your family and friends own a pistol brace, share this video with them. Please like, subscribe, and click on that notification bell for more of these videos. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.